Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Tonight, a West Side community gathering around the family struck by tragedy on New Year's morning. A vigil held in honor of the two victims killed in a fiery hit and run crash, now identified by family as 31 year old Jesus Aguilar Jr. and his 14 year old daughter Christina. Police arrested the suspected driver, Cesar Gonzalez, this afternoon. The night team's Patty Santos also reveals new information about the events that led up to the crash. Where this tragedy took place, let something great come out of this. A vigil tonight on the corner of West Poplar and Northwest 26th Street revealed the deep sadness and traumatizing wounds left by this tragic crash. My mom had called me 12 15 and told me Happy New Year. 15 minutes later, I get that phone call again and everything's in panic here. Juan Lozano, a cousin of Jesus Aguilar Jr., says the father of six was getting ready to leave a family party. He was waiting for everybody else to get in the vehicle so they could head home. And that's when everything happened. Three of his children were on board when a driver struck his van. Two kids ages one and five were pulled out of the burning van and survived. His 14 year old daughter did not. She just put a smile on everybody's face. She was a wonderful little girl. I ask you that you give them this comfort, Lord. Tonight, their friends and family mourn the loss of a beloved father and bright young girl. A police arrest affidavit provides more insight into what happened before the crash. A relative told police that suspected driver Cesar Gonzalez, his brother and friends were drinking and smoking marijuana at a New Year's Eve party on West Laurel. The house is less than a mile away from the crash site on West Poplar. The witness said at midnight, the brothers and friends went outside and started shooting into the air before speeding off. The truck sliding like it was out of control. Police say the truck belonged to Gonzalez's mother, who was out of the country. The documents say Gonzalez texted his mother asking her to report the truck stolen, but she refused and instead called police. There's a very chaotic scene for the officers to respond to, and, uh, and we're just heartbroken. We don't even have the words to say uh, to the family as they're going through this. Stephen Cavazos, Case at 12 News. And back live out here, the vigil ended a few hours ago, but community members continue to bring flowers and stop to pay their respects here at West Poplar. Tonight, we can tell you Gonzalez is booked on two counts of failure to stop and render aid resulting in death. We can also tell you he was out on bond for a DWI arrest back in July. Tim. Patty Santos reporting live for us tonight. Thank you. Police looking for the suspects in tonight's shooting on the west side. One man hit as he was heading to some basketball courts and an officer on scene stepped in to try to save his life. It happened in the 900 block of San Fernando Street near Brazos. Police say the victim was confronted by a group of men before he was shot and at, shot at and it looks like a bullet hit a major artery. The first officer on scene was able to place a tourniquet on that man's leg. He was taken to the hospital in serious condition. The suspect remains on the run. And new on the night beat a father and son arrested in connection with a murder southwest of San Antonio. That murder, investigators say, happened at a party on New Year's Day. It happened in La Prior, two hours and 45 minutes into the new year. 51-year-old David Castillo and his 25-year-old son Daniel are both facing a murder charge. The Zavala County Sheriff's Office says both men weren't invited to the party and some sort of altercation broke out. 38-year-old Abel Longoria was stabbed in the armpit, cutting a major artery. He bled to death, and the officer or the sheriff's office says the father and son were acquaintances of Longoria. Daniel was released on a $100,000 bond. His father also bonded bonded out. In Eastside home, the site of a fire and a shooting. It all happened minutes before the new year, and tonight the owner of that home is sharing her concerns. As the night team Stephen Cavazos reports, the man and woman hurt that night were the homeowner's niece and nephew. While arson investigators look into a fire at this Eastside home on Gibbs Street, police want to know about the shooting that happened here on New Year's Eve. 25-year-old Michael Ereda and 26-year-old Angela Coleman found in the home with gunshot wounds. Both rushed to the hospital but are expected to recover. Michelle Pettis tells us this home has been in her family for over 30 years. She worries how something like this could happen in a place that was meant to be safe. Pettis says she rents out the home to her niece and nephew, Coleman and Ereda. Really and truly, I don't care. I'm just thanking God. I wouldn't have. I'm glad my niece and nephew, they're still alive. Pettis still processing the crime that took place. It's making me feel messed up. 
A witness telling police a suspect was seen walking to the home carrying a long object. Officers note shotgun casings were found on the scene. The same suspect police say was seen going to the back of the house before shots were fired. By the time officers arrived, the home was on fire. Pettis says the home is now vacant. She says she doesn't know who's responsible, but she has this message. My house ain't did nothing to you. I damn sure ain't did nothing to you. So don't mess with my house. You and that was Stephen Cavazos reporting the extent of the damage inside the home is still unknown and there are still aren't any arrests in the case. If you can help investigators, call San Antonio police. An update now on a crash in the Holotus area we first told you about at six. Investigators confirming the person hit was shredding trees in a trailer when a driver crashed into that trailer just before six o'clock tonight. The victim had severe injuries to the lower part of the body and was taken to the hospital by air life. Investigators say there were no signs of intoxication, but it's unclear right now what led to that crash. It all happened on High Bluff Road. That's near Bandera Road and Chimney Creek Road. A crash also sending a 10 year old boy to the hospital with a broken leg and a cut to the head. It happened in far West Bear County off of Highway 90 on Pioneer Estate. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says the 10 year old boy was on an ATV with a six year old girl when a pickup truck hit them. The girl was not injured at this time. BCSO says no charges will be filed. Well, the new year has just started, but the docket is growing for courtrooms in San Antonio. Nurse Janine Jones, who has already served a life sentence for killing an infant in the 80s, is set for trial and another baby death. Meantime, the trial of Anton Harris, accused of being the medical center rapist, is also set for trial this month. And the DA is seeking the death penalty for Otis McCain. He's the man accused in the death of San Antonio detective Benjamin Marconi. And in February, Christopher Davila will go on trial in the baby King J case. The judges, witnesses and lawyers are all part of the equation when it comes to scheduling cases. Typically with high profile cases, there's very few prosecutors that handle these cases. These cases, there's also very few defense attorneys that handle these cases. Nothing is set in stone until the first witness takes the stand. You can count on KSAT's Paul Venema to keep you updated. Turning now to the race for president, former San Antonio mayor and HUD secretary Julian Castro officially pulling himself out of the race today. This coming after low poll numbers and a need for more campaign donors, but his time in politics may not be over yet. Political science expert Henry Flores says the 45 year old has laid a foundation for the future just by introducing himself to voters throughout the country. In some parts of the United States, they have no idea what a Latino is. They don't trust who we are yet. And there's already buzz about Castro possibly winding up as someone's running mate or even getting another high profile post. Good evening, 51 degrees outside in San Antonio tonight and over the past couple of days, rain has been very hard to come by here in town. Just a trace of rain at the airport both yesterday and today in San Antonio, uh, but farther to the southeast down on the coastal bend. That's where there have been some slightly higher rainfall totals closer to a quarter uh, to a half inch of rain for our far southeastern counties and then off closer to the Houston area. A lot of that rain uh, fell today this morning. Uh, look at the time lapse from today. The good news, we saw some clearing start to occur late in the day. Skies are going to be partly cloudy overnight and through a good portion of the day tomorrow, but we are looking at a lot of sunshine coming up for the weekend. It is going to be absolutely beautiful. We'll talk all about it and take a look at your full planning forecast coming up here in just a bit. Thank you, Katie. Another arrest for the man known as the affluenza teen. Ethan Couch stands accused of violating his probation. His legal troubles first began after drinking and driving at the age of 16 and killing four people. He avoided jail time after a psychologist testified he suffered from affluenza, which meant his wealthy parents didn't set limits for him or help him understand consequences. Two years later, Couch was busted again for a probation violation when he went to Mexico with his mother. That offense did land him in jail. He was sentenced to 720 days back in 2015. He is now 22 years old, and according to court records, Couch tested positive for THC on a drug patch which would be a violation of his probation. Also making headlines around Texas, the first funeral for one of the victims in Sunday's church shooting taking place earlier today. Richard White was killed while stepping in to help stop the violence. He was a member of the church's security team in White Settlement, Texas. That's just outside of Fort Worth. Family and friends gathered for White's funeral along with Governor Greg Abbott. He lived such a 
rich life. And I'm so proud of what he did to step up and help his fellow Texans. Tony Wallace, who had been serving communion, was also killed in the shooting. The gunman was killed by another member of the church's security team. A life or death legal battle in North Texas. A judge today ruling 11-month-old Tinsley Lewis could be taken off of life support in Fort Worth. Her mother is promising to appeal the decision and continue her fight. The little girl was born with a heart defect and suffers from lung disease. The hospital in Fort Worth argued her condition is terminal and Tinsley is in pain because of the treatment. A judge ruled she can be taken off life support in seven days. The case is centered on a Texas law that allows physicians to stop care they believe is futile if another hospital can't, find, uh, can't be found to treat the patient. Tinsley's mother argues her daughter's fate should be her decision. A Texas man who disappeared at the Grand Canyon now found alive. Crews spent 11 days searching for Edward O'Connor of LaPorte, Texas. He was found on one of the most difficult trails in the canyon and was flown out by helicopter. Investigators did not say if he suffered any injuries after vanishing during wintry conditions. Google says it's beating doctors when it comes to detecting a particular cancer. The study released this week coming up. And an update on one of the victims in the Hanukkah stabbings. Doctors admitting his prognosis is not good. And a rocket attack launched at Baghdad International Airport. The man the Pentagon says was targeted. That's next for you on the night beat. The Pentagon announcing tonight the U.S. killed the head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps Quds Force. Qasem Soleimani was killed in a strike at Baghdad International Airport. The Iraqi military says three rockets were fired at the airport. The U.S. says Soleimani, quote, was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats and service members in Iraq and throughout the region, end quote. Officials also said he was responsible for the deaths of hundreds of U.S. and coalition service members and the wounding of thousands of others. We are finding out more about the machete attack during a Hanukkah celebration in Monsey, New York over the weekend. Five people were hurt. The most seriously injured victim was identified as 72-year-old Yosef Newman. He's been unconscious since Saturday when an attacker rushed into a rabbi's home. Newman's daughter says he remains in a coma. His doctors say he may never be able to walk or talk again. The suspect is now charged with attempted murder as well as federal hate crimes. Prosecutors plan to present the case to a grand jury tomorrow. Well, Google competing against doctors when it comes to cancer. The tech company says its artificial intelligence system can beat doctors at detecting breast cancer. The claim is based on a study that tested the accuracy of the system. The study was published Wednesday in the scientific, scientific journal Nature. The AI program was trained to detect cancer using tens of thousands of mammograms from women in the UK and the US. Early research shows it resulted in fewer false positives and false negatives and can produce more accurate detection than human radiologists. Take a live, outside, live look outside with live cam tonight. Uh, chilly, but more clear. Yes, yeah, we were just under that blanket of gray uh, from late New Year's Eve to late this afternoon. Yeah. So it was definitely a great start to the new year, but we've got some good imp improvement coming into the weekend. And we would have loved to have seen some more rain the past couple of days. It just uh, did not come to be, unfortunately. All the rain that fell, even where rainfall was higher in coverage down on the coastal bend was all really light and it didn't add up to much unfortunately heading into the weekend we'll have a few lingering clouds around tomorrow cool front comes through late tonight early tomorrow morning 60s tomorrow afternoon with a few of those lingering clouds and then nothing but sunshine once we get to Saturday and the rest of the weekend spread in our temperatures here we're in the 60s in Del Rio Valverde County there low 50s here in San Antonio and some of our friends up in the hill country falling into the low 40s 43 in Kerrville at this hour skies did start to clear out here in San Antonio late this afternoon, early this evening, and you can even see on satellite and radar all that heavier rain that was off near the Houston area is continuing to move east into Louisiana and far east Texas tonight. Some thicker cloud cover does still remain between I 35 and I 45 between San Antonio and Houston. We saw some decent clearing here in town and west of the I 35 corridor, but there is still some lingering cloud cover off in our far western counties, the far western portion of the hill country 
country there and we've got a little bit of shower activity beginning to filter in from the southwest be moving into southern Maverick County here likely within uh, the next half hour or 45 minutes or so but a little bit of light radar return showing up there to the southwest and we are going to keep our eye uh, down to the southwest tonight for a few lingering sprinkles that could be moving through overnight but there's a lot going on around Texas tonight we've got a lot of heavy rain that extends into the deep south there some flooding issues ongoing across portions of Mississippi and Alabama tonight off farther to the west though and this is why we didn't clear out right away today. We've got another piece of upper level energy, a low pressure system here sitting off to our northwest that is going to have to move across Texas tonight and during the day tomorrow. So that's why we will be left with some lingering cloud cover overnight and into the day Friday. That low pressure system centered near the DFW area, cold front draped down south of it. There's not a whole lot of cold air behind this front, but what this will do is kick up our winds as we head into the day tomorrow. Uh, but before Things turn breezy on Friday. We will carry a 20% chance of some isolated showers tonight. Those very light radar returns that I was showing you coming out of northern Mexico from the southwest that could result in a little bit of light rainfall overnight. This is 3 a.m. tomorrow morning. A few little sprinkles possible as those showers dart off to the northeast by 6 a.m. tomorrow. I think all that rain will be moving off closer to the Bryan College Station area and we'll be watching this frontal boundary drape through south Texas. This will really kick in a uh, Good wind for us tomorrow. A north northwest wind in place through the duration of the day becoming pretty breezy uh, as we get closer to the late morning, early afternoon hours. So we'll have a breezy day tomorrow and then things clear out really nicely as we get into early Saturday morning. So here's a look at how well wind speeds will play out tomorrow. First thing in the morning, winds will still be fairly light, but as we approach lunchtime, sustained wind speeds will be about 10 to 20 miles per hour, and that will continue through the afternoon and early evening with winds becoming light again after sunset and by this time tomorrow night. The big issue with a, a wind out of the west northwest this time of year, uh, even north northwest, is that that's when we typically see our cedar counts uh, spike once again. So unfortunately, that could happen tomorrow. I do think the bigger issue will be on Saturday because we'll have that wind in place all day tomorrow to stir up the cedar. So likely some higher counts coming Friday into Saturday, but by Sunday, with winds becoming lighter and more southerly, um, cedar shouldn't be an issue by the end of the weekend. So just keep that in mind. We always like to give you a heads up when we can this time of year. Tonight, temperatures falling into the mid 40s. Isolated shower, possible 20% chance through early tomorrow morning. Uh, and then no rain the rest of the day. Some lingering clouds through the afternoon. High temperature in the low 60s and a breezy end to the week tomorrow. But look at the weekend. Absolutely gorgeous. Mornings will be cold. 37 Saturday morning, 41 Sunday morning, but really nice afternoon afternoons and we've got just a pretty quiet weather pattern heading into the middle of next week. Hopefully we can get some better rain chances stirred up for you soon. That'd be nice. All right. Thanks so much, Katie. Mm -hmm. Some big news possibly breaking within the past hour on Jason Garrett. Looks like after nine and a half seasons as head coach of Dallas Cowboys, it appears Jason Garrett is out. It's just a report, but we will have the latest on that in the NBA tonight. The Spurs hosting the Thunder. Well, OKC unfortunately cooled the Spurs off and in the NFL. J.J. Watt, I think, will get a lot of playing time on Saturday. Coming up. It's on game day. He's you playing. Guys about the, no, no, on, on the amount of snaps. That yeah, no, do. that's what I mean, though. You know what I mean? No, he'll, he'll be in there quite a bit. Now that J.J. Watt is back for the Texans, Bill O'Brien plans to use him a lot in big board sports. Spurs at home tonight, tipping off 2020 with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Early first quarter, DeJounte Murray goes bounce pass to LaMarcus Aldridge for three, and it's 3-2 Spurs. Moments later, L.A. drains another triple to make it 9-4 San Antonio. Late in the quarter, Lonnie Walker, the fourth, drives and feeds Jakob Pertl for a monster jam. This was tied 27-all after one. Second frame, Derek White to LaMarcus, who finds Patty Mills for a reverse. Timeout Thunder, 12-0 run for the Spurs, who led 39-30. Time for another L.A. three. Good on the Spurs. Spurs led 55-46 at halftime. Third frame, Thunder fight back to tie it up. Gilgis Alexander from downtown at 67 all. Now tied at 70, Patty Mills shoots and misses a corner three, but LA is there for a putback jam and two point lead. Spurs were up 76-74 after three. Final frame, Spurs on the break. Lonnie Walker with a full head of steam, lays it in, switching hands, and it's 78-77 Spurs. Spurs down seven when DeMar drives in for a lefty slam to avoid Steven Adams, but the Thunder hold on to beat the Spurs 109-103. 
We didn't move the ball very well tonight, I don't think. I think we were on the dribble too much. We didn't really uh, attack. Well, I thought they attacked a lot better than we did. They just straight straight ahead at the rim, found people, uh, and we were too much on the dribble and just never really got out of it. Spurs will head to Milwaukee to face the Bucks Saturday night at 7.30. NBA is mourning the loss of former NBA commissioner David Stern, who passed away yesterday at 77. He introduced several Spurs draft picks and watched them win five NBA championships. After shooting around this morning, Pop praised David Stern. Obviously, this is a, a sad time for the NBA, and especially for the family of David Stern. David Stern uh, was an iconic figure, but that's quite an understatement. What he was was a force of nature, an amazing businessman, leader, manager, a man who took over back in the mid 80s as commissioner at a difficult time and was the visionary and the catalyst that, that made it what it is today. Marco Bellinelli tweeted a picture shaking hands with Stern on draft night in 2007 and Belly wrote, thank you for everything you did. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. After days of wondering what's going on with Jason Garrett and the Dallas Cowboys, it sounds like we're about to find out. ESPN's Ed Werder says a source told him after showing an abundance of care and respect for Garrett, Jerry and Stephen Jones have decided that Garrett will no longer be a part of the Dallas Cowboys organization. Garrett's contract is set to expire January 14th. Now we just wait for the official word. The spotlight will be on Texans defensive end J.J. Watts Saturday when Houston plays Buffalo in the playoffs. Watt hasn't played since October 27th when he suffered a torn pec and was told he was done for the season. Nine weeks later, he will suit up and try to help the Texans snap their two-game postseason skid. Bill O'Brien, who said Watt will play a lot, was asked how he looked at practice Wednesday, his first day back in pads. Good. I think the whole team has really been locked in. I mean, I think that, uh, yeah, we've had everybody's been out there and that's been able to be out there and you know, we've had good, uh, you know, good practices and, um, you know, JJ's been right in there and, and uh, performing his role to the best of his ability. And I think uh, everybody's been locked in. It's going to take that to, to, to win the game. I mean, Buffalo's a very good team, very disciplined team. So I think we've had a good week. We've got to have a good day today. Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson sent a text message to the entire offense before practice telling them, let's be great. Houston will get that chance Saturday, 3.35 p.m. at NRG Stadium and KSAT 12 Sports will be there. And coming up next, Baylor football feels good about its future. Georgia beat Baylor in the Sugar Bowl last night, but still the Bears had a heck of a season. The Dogs led 19-0 in halftime and never looked back. Bears quarterback Charlie Brewer threw a touchdown pass to Denzel Mims in the third. Then he rushed for a one-yard touchdown to account for the Bears scoring. Baylor went 1-11 three seasons ago and 11-3 this year. It's been quite the turnaround for the Bears, who feel good about the future of the program. We set a good foundation for them. I feel like they, if they trust the process, it, you know what I'm saying, it'll turn out good. I think first you look at the seniors um, from where they brought the program from three, four years ago to where it is now. Um, I mean, I think you just can take a step back and look at them and look at the, those guys and what they went through and um, just really what they did for Baylor and what they did for this football program. Head coach Matt Rule, who's expected to be a candidate for some NFL coaching vacancy, says he plans to return to Baylor. For now. Yep, for now. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. You go. We'll be right back. One more look at your forecast. A couple of isolated showers possible overnight. Tomorrow, way more sun than what we've seen the past couple of days, but a breezy Friday. Weekend looks absolutely wonderful. A few more clouds roll in Monday. We've got another dry frontal boundary that'll move in late Monday, early Tuesday to send us back to the 60s early next week. All right, thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. That is all of our time for now. Don't forget, Good Morning San Antonio starts at 4.30. Good night.